Good evening, I'm Chiro, and this is a video tutorial on the hardware requirements for video capture. And what a mouthful. Okay, and what's hardware? If you don't know, this is anything you can reach out and physically touch. Uh, your computer, keyboard, printer, all that stuff, not programs. More importantly, this is the only thing you have to actually spend money on. Everything after this video will be free. And so, what you need to capture video is, or I should say R, I was bad at grammar, is your computer, your capture card, your device, what you're going to capture, and a microphone if you're going to do commentary. Okay, you probably already have a computer and these are the requirements. You need 1.7 gigahertz CPU power. And this is a single chip. If you have a dual or quad core, uh, you're fine. You need 512 megabytes RAM and DDR1. More than likely you have DDR2 RAM and if you have DDR3 you're compensating for something. And then you need 20 gigabytes hard disk drive space and this is not for the files. This is basically space you're gonna use to edit and dub and play around with whatever you're capturing. So there's a lot of leeway depending on how efficient you are with your videos. A single caveat is that if you want a 4 gigabyte or a larger file you need to use the NTFS system and basically this is uh, 40 minutes of video at least the way I'm going to show you how to capture. And as you can see here if your computer is 6 years or younger you're fine. Okay, and now the actual video cards. Um, they come in three flavors. You have your capture card, your TV tuner, and your video video out uh, cards, also known as Vivo. Video capture is basically generic for taking something from a device and putting it onto a file on your computer, such as AVI or MPEG. TV tuner is basically a video capture that can look at TV signals so you can hook up an antenna or a cable or satellite line and watch the channels. There's a lot of overlap between these two and you have to read to see what it can do. Also note that the digital TV signal protocols apply for the TV tuners. In other words, if you want to watch TV in the United States after August this year, you have to either hook up a converter box to it or you have to make sure your car can accept digital TV signals. And then last and kind of least are the Vivo cards. This is basically a computer graphics card that has TV input output. Mostly this is used to hook up your computer to your widescreen TV and use it off the couch. I don't recommend it because you want to keep your hardware dedicated. Let your graphics card do graphics. Let your capture card do capturing. If you have one already, that's fine. If you don't, just don't, you know, specifically go and look out for one. Okay. Now we have the ports, which is the most important. What hooks up to what, where, why, and how? First, the most basic one is the coaxial cable or RF switch, as illustrated here. Basically, it's a little uh, screw you just put on with most uh, TV and VCR devices and such. The other one that's common are the video composite, as shown here. The little yellow, white, and red pins that are very common in modern video game consoles. The last one is the S-Video switch, shown here, but not well. You'll know it when you see it, and it's common with certain devices. Basically, when you go out shopping for cards, you want to make sure you have the right holes and plugs for whatever you're going to capture with. Um, also, when you look for capturing, um, in general, the less ports it has, the less expensive the card is. So here we have a very simple, you know, single coaxial cable. This is around $20. Here we have something more sophisticated, a lot more ports, so it's going to be around the $30 to $50 range. You do not need to spend more than $50 for video capture. There are cards that exist at $100 and $200 level, 
these are not needed unless you are a professional video editor and if you are you really shouldn't be watching this because this is for amateurs also these two cards illustrate the type of connections you have with your computer here we have a USB one and here we have a PCI and so which one do you want to buy USB ones are very easy to install you just plug them in the problem is that USB is slower for data transfer and has a smaller data transfer rate as compared to PCI. However, although PCRs are faster and I recommend them more since they do a better job, you have to open up your computer. Some people do not have that type of experience or don't want to take that risk so they'll just avoid it. That is your call um, as to which one you would prefer. Okay. Now there's media and basically whatever you want to hook up to your card you re can record. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Mega Drive, Atari, Dreamcast, PlayStation, PlayStation 1, 2, GameCubes, your VHS tapes, your VCRs, your digital cameras, your old analog cameras. If you can plug it into the ports on your video card you can record off them. Let's see, continue. And now, if you're going to do commentary with your videos, you need a microphone of sorts. First thing to look for is the direction. The first type is uni, which means one. And so basically, this is just going to record whatever you're talking. The other is omni, which is everywhere. So it's going to record ambient noise, such as you hear now, the keyboard clicks. Depending on how you're going to record your sound, um, you have the choice between the two. Let's see. Yeah. If you're going to record off your computer speaker, as in crank up the volume and mix it that way, you want Omni. Otherwise, Uni is fine. It's to your taste. After the direction is the amplitude, which is how much electrical current, height, whatever. I'm not good at physics. For your microphone, uh, the lower the amplitude, the lesser the quality for sound transfer to your computer. The higher the amp, the better. And so when you look at your microphone, they might say it has a micro amp. This means it has a little device on the microphone to increase the volume, or at least the transfer of the sound, and this is recommended. The next thing is to look at the cable thickness. And how thick the cable is is how many amps it has. Uh, thick cables like spaghetti, um, have higher amps and a better uh, sound transfer. Thinner ones like vermicelli have a lower transfer. So if the you, it looks like the wire can be pulled apart with your bare hands, uh, look for another device. Afterwards, you have the option of a headset, and this depends on your how you're going to mix your video sounds. If you're going to do a stereo mix, to have proper levels, the sounds from your computer are going to be very, very soft and you're not going to understand what's going on. However, you plug in your headphones and boom, the sound is very loud. You can have a microphone and your headphones separate, but then that's two wires so that you can trip yourself up. It's just another option for if you want to keep things concise and neat. And then after the headphone, you have the cable length. Most microphones and headsets are three feet. I recommend six feet of cable. That seems like a lot. You want to know why? Is if you have three feet, more often than not, you're going to have to record with your chin to the table. For a three foot cable to work on a computer, the computer has to be at desk height and the port has to be on the front. Not everyone has that type of setup. When you do your recording, you're not going to always have that set up. Six feet is enough from wherever you sit to anywhere in the back of your computer. This goes from microphones, cameras, joysticks, printers. It's a good round number. Mm -hmm. And that is basically it. So, until next time, I'm Tiro, and have fun making videos. See ya!